What's going on guys? Recently, I wrote my very first program in the Go programming language. And I have a bunch of friends who have been hounding me to get into Go programming, even though I've sort of been avoiding it up until now. So I decided I would finally break down and cover Go on my channel and start getting into more programming in Go. So what is Go and why have I said it so many times in the past 30 seconds? It is a low-level language developed by Google, specifically by these three main engineers, and between the three of them, these guys have done some pretty big stuff in the world of tech. But yeah, it's like a weird crossover episode, and they've all come together and they created a programming language called Go. I've heard of Go, Rust, and Julia being referenced as sort of newer, newer level languages. Before now, you had like, you know, Python and Ruby fighting over being the scripting language and then now you have this newer generation coming up which consists of go and programmers are you know a lot of people are looking at these as like the languages to learn in the next few years and one thing i find in common with all these languages is that they all try to compile and they all try to optimize for speed so a lot of them at least go and rust try to be like c and that it's very low level it's compiled it's down to the metal almost except they try to make it better than C. And I think Rust, I feel a lot safer programming in Rust, even though I'm not as good at it, than I do at C. And Go feels like, it's like C, sort of, in that it's you have low-level control, but it's, it's so nice. It's so much nicer than programming in C. I find it real easy to believe that Google built this language, actually. Uh, they optimized it for very fast compile times, very easily readable code, according to Google, and I can imagine that because, you know, they have like these enormous teams working on their projects. So you wouldn't want them working on something like JavaScript, where you could make any stylistic choice you want, and other people might not know to check for that. So because of that, even though I'm not such a fan of it, Go definitely has a very strict stylistic mindset attached to the language. Stuff like... You know how in C, if you only if you have an if statement and there's only one thing you do inside that if, you could just put it next to the if statement outside of any curly brackets? Well, in Go, you can't do that. You always have to have the curly brackets. And there's other stylistic things like that, little quirks where like you have to have this thing, uh, otherwise your code won't compile. And I can sort of get why they would do that. That's just like less patterns for any Go parser to recognize, so that way the build times stay low. I guess. And then it adds like readability, like you know where things are going to be, how it's going to look if you're programming in Go. I wouldn't necessarily agree with that design choice, but I can see why they would do it. And it, I think it definitely works for the language. Another thing, is Go compiled or interpreted? Well, it has a runtime, but it's a little different from like real interpreted languages. When you compile a Go program, it actually packages pieces of the runtime into your executable. So you end up with these pretty big executables, but it's still a compiled language and it's still in machine language. So it doesn't really affect performance as much as like Java or Ruby or Python. Okay, so I'm gonna run through a few little Go programs. I haven't written too much in this language, but I'm gonna show you guys at least what I've learned through that first program that I wrote. Okay, so I'm just going to run through Hello World real quick just to get that timeless classic out the way. And then we could do a, something a bit more complex in Go. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to find package main inside here. Or just whatever you want your package to be. And you can import format. Apparently in Go they call this funct, uh, but I'm going to call it format because I don't ever want to say that again. So this package right here has all of your all of your functions for like printing and interpolating strings and whatnot. So I'll show you a few of those after I do this basic Hello World program. Uh, so we're going to create a main function. They call it func, and we're going to do format.println hello world. And in Go, you don't need a semicolon after here. All right, so we have a very basic Hello World program, and let's go ahead and run this. All right, so to compile a Go program, you would do go build and then you give it the name. All right, and if we check now, we have a little hello executable. Let's go ahead and run that. Hello. Now, I also want to show you how big these executables are because Go will package its runtime into them. 
Okay, so as you can see here, it's actually like 2.3 megabytes for this one little Hello World executable. And just to show you a bit of comparison, I'm going to go ahead and compile the same program in C real quick. The same program is only like 8.6 kilobytes, so it's a lot less. Now, just to prove to you guys that Go actually does compile down into CPU instructions, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at it using object dump. Okay, so we get a whole lot of output here, but if we scroll... Yeah, so we get a whole lot of output, but this still is machine instruction code for my CPU. And just compare with a.out, which might also have a lot. I don't want to go digging through machine code, so whatever. Right, so here is Hello World. Now I'm going to show you a string interpolation version real quick, and that way I can just move into something a bit more complex and go. Okay, so right here I can declare a variable called name and then set it equal to Alex. This little colon equals means that I'm binding this variable name to the actual data. Same goes for message here. So with the format library, there's a sprintf function, sort of like in C and C++, and that is basically our string interpolation for Go. And then I can use the same package to print it out to the console. So let me just show you that real quick. And there we go. So a fully interpolated message in the console in Go. And yes, there is type inference in this language, but I also could have said name is a string or var name string, uh, but then I would have to declare it separately and then I can set the SQL. Or what I could do is this. So if you use like var and then declare the type of the variable, then you don't have to bind the value with this colon here. You could just set the value after it's been bound to this name. A little confusing, but if the more you practice with Go, the more you'll figure out what to use in which case. Okay, so in order to show you something a bit more complex, I'm going to go over and do some file I.O. inside Go. So let's do the same stuff we were doing before. I'm not sure if this will give us a name conflict or I define them both as package main, but I guess we'll figure that out right now. So a few multiple import statements, you can actually just put them like this, and it's all fine. Uh, so let's still go ahead and define func main again. And we're going to say scanner is goofyo.new scanner. And you'll notice even back in hello.go, whenever I have a function here, I use the package name and then dot and then an uppercase. It might remind you a little bit of C sharp, but in Go, the language is pretty well designed to create modular packages. So all you have to do inside Go is if you define something that starts with a lowercase letter like main here, then you won't be able to see it from outside this file here when you're using it as a package. But if I define it with a capital letter like this, then it's actually accessible like new scanner here from the Bufio package. And actually I just realized I forgot to put this. There we go. Right, and in Go, you don't really need these. Okay, so this is gonna read every line from a file, and then I'll show you guys a little bit of other file I.O. stuff. All right, so I just did a few things here. So if I include the OS package, then I can use os.open, which will open me a file and it'll put the file stream into F, and if there's an error, it'll put it in, in E. So a cool thing about Go is you actually return tuple types from functions, which I really like. I mean, I call it a tuple, they call it multiple return type, essentially, but it, it's just a tuple that's easy to separate, I mean, let's be honest. Uh, so that way I can say, if there is an error, then, you know, print that there's an error, uh, and I should probably have it return here. Yeah, and then otherwise I can just go on and read the file. So let's see if this actually builds or not. Okay, it's saying we have an undefined F and E, and that's because, again, I didn't use the colon. So if you, I probably could have done that if I want to say like var F, ooh. Well, yeah, you get the point. If I want to say var F, I wouldn't have needed the colon, but because I wanted to define it and set this all in one line, I'm going to have to use this colon, non-bool e. 
Right, so if E not equals nil here, then we'll print this out. So another thing I'm not such a big fan of in Go is apparently you can't use like, just put in a value and then if it's not null, it'll return true in like an if statement. Uh, but you know, whatever, it's just nitpicks. All right, there we go. Well, slash file IO, and it'll print out every line that I passed in from hello.c. So that's how you do simple file IO in Go. Okay, so last thing I think I'll show you all in Go is just some random number generation, and then I'll go ahead and end the video here. So you might be wondering, what was the actual first program I did in Go that combines file IO, uh, standard input IO, and then random numbers. Well, actually I'll do a video on that later. And if you guys wanna, if you guys are really, really interested, I'm actually push it further up in my release schedule. Uh, I actually am pretty excited to get into more Go programming on this channel, uh, but it all depends on like what you guys wanna see. So if you all wanna see like, I don't know, maybe Go, OCaml, Rust, Lua, you know, just let me know whatever you wanna see. You know, because I'm I'm excited to like try anything, any new language or language I already know. There are a few languages, there's actually a bunch of languages I know that I haven't done anything on this channel just yet. So, you know, let me know whatever you guys want to see for sure. Okay, so this is going to print out five random 32-bit float values. And I can actually interpolate. Wait, actually, hold on. Because with print line, you actually can't do the interpolation. So you have to use the sprint F. At least I don't think you could do interpolation with print line. So let's actually go ahead and run this. And you can actually use run instead of build. Essentially, it'll just call the build commands. And then if it builds correctly, it'll also call your executable, right? Okay, syntax error, unexpected comma, expecting this. Cannot range over five type untyped number. Oh, that's right, this is in Python. Okay, so I actually have to set i to zero and then i less than five, i plus plus. So many languages keep track of in my head. It gets a little confusing from time to time. But yeah, that's how you can just like print out some random float values in Go. All right, that is all I have for this video on what is Go for today. So if you find it helpful or otherwise entertaining, please leave a like, comment, share, subscribe, follow me on social medias, or you can also click the notification bell so you can stay updated whenever I upload a new video. If you'd like to help support the channel, feel free to also watch any of the other videos around the screen here. Uh, apart from that, I don't have too much else to say on the topic, so thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.